welcome to another exciting conversation. We have a returning guest, you know, and her name is Danielle Russell. She's a Jamaican film maker who has written, directed, and produced several short films and documentaries that have been screened locally in Jamaica and internationally at places such as Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival, the Transoceanic Visual Exchange in Melbourne, and the Caribbean Film Festival in China. And the last time we had Danielle on, she was finishing up her master's in China on filming. So isn't that something? She came back to us. Danielle has also participated in several developmental programs, such as the 2017 Jamaica Film and Television Association Propeller Program, a competitive script to screen developing program, and the British Council Film Lab. Danielle holds an MSA in film and television production from the communication in, from the University of China in Beijing and currently lives in Kingston, Jamaica, where she's currently developing her first feature screenplay. So let's give some love to our lovely aspiring woman and my co-host Chris will do the interview. So take it away, Chris. Thanks, Janice, and welcome, Danielle, again. It's great to have you back. Hi, thank you for having me again. It's great to be back. I'm so happy I can get to talk to you both and just share some more about what's been going on. Great. I know it's been a while, and so some of the folks might have not have heard our first dialogue. So we want to bring them up to speed quickly by sharing a little about your Jamaican roots. Okay, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm born in Jamaica. I was born in Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica. I lived in. I did live in the country for a little bit. I lived in Manchester for a bit in my formative years, but for the most part, I'm a Kingston girl. And um, I went to school here. I went to UWE, and I, you know, I pretty much spent most of my life here. I was first introduced and fell in love with filming in Jamaica. And so, yeah, I'm a Jamaican at heart. Everywhere I go, I take Jamaica with me. Um, and I always just find myself back in Jamaica. And so now I'm getting ready to write my first feature film, which is really interestingly enough about a girl going from the country to Jamaica, to, to Kingston, sorry, to um, find herself. All right. Oh, but before we get into the detail of your story, let, let's talk about you. You've had some pioneering work. You had some pioneer training in China. You had to learn a new yeah. language. You had to get used to a new culture. What yeah. are some of the benefits you derive from that experience? Well, the the most obvious benefit is learning a new language and getting a deeper insight into a culture that not many people are able to, to get an insight into. I mean, no, no, there are a lot more people going to China, um, but still not a whole lot. So that's the main benefit, and because of that, I when I came back from China, and because of my my language, um, I was able to I got a lot of opportunities to travel because of my my association with China. I got job opportunities because of my association with China, um, and now I I have, you know access to to more part to more people and more parts of the world so for example whereas before if i was trying to um find a job and it said you have to speak chinese i would automatically just disregard it but no i i'm actually open to it um i understand a little bit more about chinese and chinese culture and there's some parts of it that i really genuinely truly love so I now have more to love um, in this world. Okay. Well, within the Jamaican, there's some suspicions about the Chinese intent on the island, right? Some people mm -hmm. perceive yeah. them as neo-colonial, um, yeah. or environment could be at risk because of what they'd like to do. What's your perspective on the influence of the Chinese influence in the Jamaican scene? Yeah. 
that is a tough question to answer because it's okay. such a yeah, it's um it's so multifaceted, I think that question uh, or the issue I should say. The issue is multifaceted. Okay. Um but I think one of them I have and I have heard those um sentiments expressed locally. Um but I think one of the issues that I found is that there is not a lot of information available to you know the 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 to Jamaican to the public I would say and I think mm-hmm. that is one of the main reasons for this this cause of suspicion because people are suspicious of things that they don't know about or they don't understand which is understandable you know if you don't know if people aren't willing to open and willing to share you'd be suspicious too so I think one of the issues is that you know we just see Chinese companies come in, we just see things being built, and we're not really sure what's going on. You know, we we can't comfortably communicate with the workers, and there's a vast cultural difference, you know, and I think that mm-hmm. vast cultural difference caused all these problems. And so I think my, my take on it is that I think we need to, I mean, it's easier said than done, but... I think if it, there was some way to have more dialogue, more information being shared openly with the public, then it would it would allay a lot of fears. Um, okay. But at the same time, at the same time, though, I can understand why people would have issues with the environment, and I think the government does have a role to play in protecting our lands, and so I think mm-hmm. it goes both ways. So I think um, open open um communi- flow of communication and as well as the government kind of um communication with the people and being protective of our of our land, you know, and our spaces. Okay. But right. Yeah, so that's my take on it. All right, good. They give us a good context and you know, because you you have you've you built from that point of view given your your Chinese um schooling. Well, look, you also, I look to you as being a cultural change agent because of the skills that you've developed. You have a powerful set of skills. You're a storyteller, you have video skills, and you have a heart for leaving a legacy. Um, what brought you to wanting to pursue that kind of passion? Well, initially it wasn't the, the film. Um, Film, it just kind of happened, and what led me to it, what drew me to it, in, interestingly, was sound. I was really fascinated with sound, and then mm. once I got, yeah, I wanted to be a sound designer. Um, it had nothing to do with storytelling, but then I think once I, I started realizing, as I got older and I started realizing that I could put a story on camera, um mm-hmm. I got more interested in it, and then when I was at, when I was about fifteen or so, I would watch a lot of independent films from all over the world, and I became absolutely fascinated with just these stories of people that I would never have seen anywhere else. You know, because Hollywood doesn't bring those mainstream Hollywood doesn't bring those stories. Um, it was a right. it was IFC Independent Film Channel, and I'd watch a lot because we had cable. They they used to bring IFC freely in those days. Nowadays we have to pay for it. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we watched a lot of independent films. It's it's harder to get on TV, you know. But um, so I was so fascinated with those films, and I think I just identified with all of those stories. And so maybe what what triggered it was seeing how much watching those films affected me and Mm -hmm. wanting to do the same for others. You know, I wanted to tell stories from my perspective um, or from tell stories of of issues or experiences that I am familiar with and share it with people who wouldn't have those experiences. And so I think that's what, that's what drove me. Um, That's what, 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 that's what still drives me. Um, and that, along with the fact that film is a powerful tool for change, as you mentioned, and right. if I can, yeah, so if I can 
create change somehow or just cause one person to to rethink an issue, then mm-hmm. that would that would be a legacy that I would be happy to leave behind. Right. Well, the point of entry into because the technology is getting cheaper every day is get yeah. to the film industry is actually the buyers are being lowered. What's mm-hmm. your, the the health and the scope of the Jamaican film industry? The health of the Jamaican film industry. Well, yeah. I think it's improving. Definitely, definitely improving because when I left Jamaica, um I I wasn't I mean I wasn't in the film industry when I left but I don't mm-hmm. recall seeing so much so much information about film I don't remember um hearing about short films being churned out of Jamaica not churned but being released I should say um mm-hmm. and in the years since I've come back I mean everyone's really excited um you hear about a, a new short film being released. You hear about short films being winning awards. You hear about short films. You hear about um, feature films being made because you know Sprinter was released um, recently. Um, and Flight, there's a short film called Flight that won several awards. Um, and we have a film commissioner now. Um, well, in the time that I've been back from China, Renee Robinson, mm-hmm. she's done an amazing job with you know, dealing with the educating filmmakers in in Jamaica about the business side of film and how to get your film sold. And it's not just film, animation as well. So animation films are so, also on a rise. Okay. So that, right, what and, are the challenges that you see the film industry um, is facing that, that's stopping them from having like a breakthrough moment like being in Hollywood or Bollywood? Mm-hmm. Well, as I, as I just mentioned, we're on our rise, so we're growing. It, we were mm-hmm. growing, you know, we had a film industry before, I, 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 you know, we did, but we're growing a lot more now. And so I think we're in the early stages, and I think in a couple of years we're going to have a boom. But I think one of the – so right now we're laying the foundation, definitely. And I also just want to mention the existence of JAFTA, Jamaica Film and TV Association, which started, I think, the same year I came back, 2015. And there are other organizations starting as well, Jamaica Animation Nation and so on. Um, and so I think we're laying the, the foundation now. I think one of the other things, one of the things is understanding the business side of film because I think – Many filmmakers in Jamaica are focused on the creative side, which is how do you direct a film properly, right. how do you produce a film, how do you edit. But in but after you do that, what do you do with the film? Do you just show it to a couple of friends, put it up on YouTube? <laughs> I think that right. I think that is key, and I think no right. is um, right. So now we're trying to lay the foundation to explain um, or to, to to educate people on how to including myself, educate people on the business side of film. So, you know, go to the film markets and sell your film, or you can put on streaming platforms and you can earn money from downloads and all sorts of ways that you can sell your film. You know, it's not just leaving it on a hard drive to gather dust, which I myself thought. So I think right. that that's one of the main the main um, blocks, or that was one of the main blocks. The understanding the business side of film, but I think we're slowly building and laying the foundation for improving it. And so I do think in the next 10 years, Jamaica could be like a Nollywood. So we'd be a Jollywood. This is wonderful news. Well, let's turn yes. now to what, right? And you're, you're about to, it's an enormous uh, goal that you've set for yourself in doing this, yeah. this film. Tell us um, a little about it, what motivated you about it, and and what the line and the like. Okay, sure. So the film, my first feature film is This City of Mine, and it's based on a short film I did in 2017 called, also called This City of Mine, and the short film was done as part of the Jafta Propeller Project, and it focused on a young woman getting to work trying to get to work on time using the public transportation system in Kingston. 
and initially it was a one off project. It wasn't mm -hmm. I didn't intend for it to go further. But each time I'd screen it, especially in Jamaica, I'd get so many questions, you know, about the the background of the character, like, um, where was she from? Why why did she why did she have this reaction in the film? It's a very I've I've come to, to acknowledge it as being a very polarizing film, so I tend to get a lot of questions about it because it mm -hmm. deals with sexual she um sexual harassment, um, of women, among other things. And so I would get lots of questions and I I found myself, you know, answering this, these questions a lot and because I guess because the character was kind of um, you, you don't find out much about the character in the short film and so I really, I came to the point where I wanted to develop the character so I could answer, kind of answer all these questions and yeah, so I've been thinking about it for about two years actually and mm -hmm. it finally culminated into me wanting to uh, 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 into wanting to do a feature, and um, what pushed it actually was that I got a residency, an opportunity to attend a residency in Bali um, through the SRM Digital Marketing Agency, and so that really kickstarted this whole process of me wanting to write a film, um, wanting to write a screenplay for this. Yeah, so that's what that's what really motivated me. Um, and because yeah, there are lots of there are lots of people who are who want to find out more about this character, and I yeah, I want to tell them more about the character. And oh, I also want to mention it was it's not just about the character, but I initially when I did the short film, I wanted to showcase Kingston because Kingston, as I said, I'm a Kingston girl, ah, and I wanted to right. yeah, I wanted to. A, a more, a more, I wanted more opportunity to showcase Kingston, and I love cooking and baking, so I wanted to really focus hone in on the culinary aspect of Kingston, and so that's what I'll be trying to show in this film. So, um, what are some of the challenges that you run into in such a, a large enterprise? Like, okay, so. Some of the challenges, right now I'm just in the development stage, which is writing the screenplay. Um, mm -hmm. And so the the challenge, the main challenge I have is, you know, coming up with a, um, a story arc that is real and that's interesting and that um, seems authentic to the character. Um, but... I can foresee several challenges once production begins, and I think the main challenge I'll have is funding because okay. um, that's that's one of the main issues that we have, I think, in the film industry in Jamaica, funding. Um, right. Although, right, so I think right now the challenge is really writing the script, getting the script out, um, down to, to really that distilling it to the main core and the main, you know, so it's nice and juicy. <laughs> but right. once that hap once I've gotten over that hurdle, that's a that's a personal hurdle that really just takes time I think. Um but once I've gotten over that hurdle, I think the the other one I'll have to face is funding. Yeah. Okay. So how can the wider community support and encourage your initiative here? Oh well, thank. Uh, well, if anyone is interested in supporting the initiative, they can follow us on Instagram, or they can follow me on Instagram at Danielle Russell Film Arts. At on right, Danielle Russell, at Danielle Russell Film Arts. Additionally, if they would like, they could donate to the PayPal, um, which you can donate using the email address Danielle Russell Companies at gmail.com, and okay. through that, once you donate, um, please send me an email address, and I you will be, have access to exclusive insider updates, and um, there will actually be a table read sometime next year where all the backers will be able to attend and will be able to hear a couple pages of the script, 
Um, okay. So, right. So, so um, if people are interested, they can donate, and they'll have access to all of that. Um, or they can follow me on Instagram, as I mentioned, and they can see um, the progress of what's going on. Wonderful. So you have like a, a timeline. When do you think it's going to be ready for, say, a preview? Yeah, so I I do definitely have a timeline. My timeline is to complete this by June 2022. So fingers crossed okay. everything aligns for June 2022. Um, and that's because I have to, you know, once I finish writing the script, I have to get um, funding together, crew together, shoot, edit, and then um, June 2022, I hope to have it ready for the film festival run, um, which starts in September. So okay. a preview come, I mean, there could be like a, a pre-final cut preview. I'm not sure. Right. Um, right. So that's, that's fingers crossed for June 2022. That's my goal right now. Wonderful. That, that sounds great, and it's, you know, give and magnitude of it. That's a pretty good um, schedule. So, you know, you, you, you're capturing you, in this one, you're, you, you're trying to uh, highlight some of the challenges that women going to work have, and also Kingston. Are there other themes or topics that you're going to use that skills that you have now to explore and to bring to the, to the film medium? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. So, as I mentioned, I want to, to bring eyes to, to to issues that people are not used to seeing. I find that I'm really, really interested in stories that would be untold um, mm -hmm. or not untold. Other people would find the stories. But I'm really interested in stories about um, small or not small. Okay. Um, I'm really interested in stories about per people who are underrepresented. Um, I'm interested in, in in issues that beg for change, you know, things like that. So I really mm -hmm. have my eye out for for often overlooked stories, and so that's what I would hope to kind of um, train my lens on stories that are of people who are underrepresented or stories that that you know could could use some could do with change, you know. Yeah. Okay, neat. So let's let's steer out to put on your um your crystal ball and look out, you know, say ten years or so. What would you see this fertile imagination of you creating? Um, well, definitely. I in five years, I hope to have the feature film completed, and in cinemas. Mm -hmm. um, I hope to have a couple more short films produced. Um, I also hope to have um, some documentaries produced in five years, and who knows? I might also have a couple animations out. So that's what. Wow, I animation. Work yeah yeah tease us a little about that you you use an animation because now you have a little more control of medium right well, I wouldn't be doing the animation myself no I'd be working with you'd animation. be partnering with somebody else, so you'd do the right, story and exactly. you have somebody do the fulfillment on animation right it's wonderful right exactly right. exactly so that's just a little preview of what might call <laughs> okay. Rachel. So you heard it first. Well, thank you for you. I heard it first. We just broke news, folks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> well, I, I'd like for people, as I said, you, you're a pioneer in so many ways. And I, if folks are smart enough, this is a young lady you'd like to follow and keep in touch with. Tell us again how they can keep in touch with you, Danielle. Okay. So you can keep in touch with me by following me on Instagram at Daniel Russell Film Arts. That's D A N I E L L E R U S S E L L F I L M A R T S. Or if you'd like to donate to the to the film, the production of the film, you can donate on PayPal using the email address Daniel Russell Companies at gmail dot com, which is 
D A N I E L L E R U S S E L L C O M P A N I E S at gmail dot com. Wonderful. And for the wisdom you'd like to share with us before we close? Words of wisdom. Uh, yes. Yes. I would say just wake up every day and the first thing that you should do before you do anything else is to do the thing that matters to you and you'll be mm-hmm. happy. You'll, you'll be able to go through the day. Amen. Awesome. So to learn more about Chris Daly, visit digital to grow That's digital with the number 2 growcom To learn more about Jamaican Diaspora, visit JamaicanDiaspora.com. And again, to learn, um, if you want to support Danielle, remember her PayPal address is DanielleRussellCompany at gmail.com. That's D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E. R-U-S-S-E-L-L-C-O-M-P-A-N-I-E-S at Gmail. And her Instagram is Danielle Russell Film Arts. That's D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E-R-U-S-S-E-L-L-F-I-L-M-A-R-T-S. Danielle, we certainly had a good time, and we're going to, you're going to come and spend some more time with us in when, when your film is incomplete. You know that we're going to keep this conversation going. So thank of you course, so much for spending course. some time with us. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Bye now. Okay, bye. Bye.